Welcome back to the Sideline Sorcerers. Now this week, we had 14 quarterbacks start who were not the starter in week one. And this is just absolutely unprecedented for the NFL. I have never seen a league where so many backups are playing, especially when some of these backups are going to be taking the reins for their team into the playoffs. Yeah, it's crazy. A couple takeaways for me are that a lot of them are playing well. The ones that are happen to be with the better, more offensive coaches like Kevin O'Connell in Minnesota. Now, Nick Mullins played really well, I'd say, mm-hmm. despite losing Jake Brownlee, of course, in Cincinnati. Joe Flacco playing great in Cleveland, all of which have offensive coaches. But overall, still not good for the league. Obviously, Roger Goodell, the commissioner, is probably sin. In his chair, he's like, damn, all my stars are gone. I mean, thank God you still have Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts. But, I mean, the fact that we still have three more weeks, mm-hmm. someone more is bound to get hurt. Right. So, And even, like, some guys who have been the starters have come back from injury. You know, like Justin Fields came yeah. back oh, after yeah. a long stint of being injured. I mean, it's, not, it's just been the entire season. It's mm-hmm. just been filled with these stars getting injured. It's just tough because there already are so many rules in place. You know, they're yeah. calling all these roughing the passer right. penalties. And, of course, after Tua had the concussions last year, they mm-hmm. cracked down on it a ton. So at this point, I think it comes down to the offensive line play has not been great. Yeah. Not protecting the quarterback well enough. So they're taking all these unnecessary hits. Mm-hmm. And I do think a bunch of them are fluky injuries. Like, I think the Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousin ones, like those ones usually wouldn't happen. But still, there are just a ton of going on right now now you do have to say in vegas that one's not injury related they intentionally benched jimmy garoppolo but yeah still craziness going on around the league but i think it makes for a little bit more exciting kind of reminds me of the covid year Mm -hmm. where there were just so many moving parts and also a lot of backup quarterbacks you get to see a little bit more of the league right which i enjoy but yeah guys welcome back let's get into it with the week 15 assessment we do have to go over the thumbnail stats you know maybe you want to take this one i know you have a fascination for my (laughs) thumbnail stats i do dude i'm obsessed with it we should have well i guess we did know that justin fields was going to carry the bears to a loss this week yeah darnell mooney he knew justin fields was in the corner right i'm going to bobble this touchdown into an interception because we can't win yeah the hail mary to win the game Mm -hmm. was not going to hit simply because you decided to place Justin Fields in the corner. Yeah, everyone who thought the Bears was going to win, you guys should look. I mean, you guys got to trust me at this point. Seven-game losing streak. Who do you got this week, bro? You're not going to like it. I'm not going to like it. Oh, don't tell me it's like a Josh Allen, bro, or like a – oh, I know who it is. I think I know. It's going to be Tua. It's Tua. Oh, I don't like that, bro. (laughs) He's been sentenced to the corner. (laughs) I think the streak is going to have to come to an end this week. You think so? Well, it's really going to be tested. This is the first time, I think, in a while where the corner QB Mm -hmm. has been a favorite. Yeah. Actually, so. I'm actually kind of surprised that you didn't put Dak and Tua in the, like, the left and right hand, like, I did. Brock Purdy and Lamar Jackson. Oh, that is that. I've okay. Been playing, that is a good one. Yeah, I've been putting Dak up in the thumbnails way too much mm-hmm. lately. Yeah, and I haven't put two in the corner yet, actually. So mm-hmm. wanted to toss them down there. So yeah, you guys already can take it to the bank that the Cowboys are winning that game, <laughs> and it stays pretty much the same. The left and right quarterback battling back and forth, eight and seven. <clears throat> but getting into our picks, Jake went nine and seven, bringing his total to one thirty three and ninety one. I won 11 and 5, bringing mine to 140 and 84. Thursday night football, Chargers at Vegas. And I don't think anyone saw this coming. I mean, the Vegas Raiders put up zero points last week and just came out and did the exact opposite of that, putting up six. It was unreal. (laughs) Absolutely unreal. But I do have to say, I used as one of my best bets the Chargers in Vegas. Over 33 and a half. You could have done over double. <laughs> I know. I, that's exactly what I wanted to say. You definitely, you could have gone over double. Yes. Yes. Yeah, not have. even oh, close. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. would have been like 84 or 86, I think was the point total. Yeah. It was but, almost over double for just the Raiders as it is. Yeah. I know. That's just crazy. 98% of the public was on the under. So of course, dude, this one was absolutely going to soar over. I can't believe that. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I just... It wasn't, it honestly was not to be expected. I mean, who would think that the Raiders would come up and that's never been done before, you know, someone to put up zero and then 63 and back to back weeks. No, absolutely unheard of. I mean, the Chargers have been playing good defense, but Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, they knew their coach was going to get fired, which he did. Justin Herbert's hurt now. So they all just gave up. 
And I think that kind of contributed to the outburst of scoring from the Raiders. Right. But you still got to give them credit. You know, Connell played well. And honestly, Easton sick for the Chargers, knowing that the teams quit around him. He still played pretty good ball in this game. He did have a couple turnovers, but had a lot of production, three touchdowns, a lot of mm-hmm. yards. So good for him. Maybe he'll be able to play well the you know, remaining few games of the year and make a name for himself. Maybe it's possible. But so how do you feel now that the guy that – you have basically loathed for the mm-hmm. entirety of this podcast is finally off of the Chargers. One of, you know, who you said is probably the worst coach in the league. I know you did not. We're not a fan of him. How are you feeling now that he's gone? Well, it's the right move for sure. I think that they should have done it a long time ago. They should have done it after that loss to Jacksonville in the mm-hmm. playoffs last year because, of course, they you know blew like a 28 to nothing yeah. Yeah, lead. So they should have done it then. Or they should have done it earlier in the season. I mean, there were a couple of games they got really lucky winning. Mm-hmm. Think back to that Minnesota game. He went for it on his own, like 34-yard line, didn't get it. Got lucky off of a Kirk Cousin interception in the end zone. Otherwise, you're going to lose that game and right. you probably get fired then. So, yeah, there were a ton of reasons. I did. I was a little surprised, though, that, I mean, I get it. You give up 63 points as a defensive coach, you're going to get fired. But I thought that he would be able to muddle through these games and play like okay and like probably lose them, but play okay and just get fired at the end of the year because Mm -hmm. it is a backup quarterback. And then it would just allow the front office to, you know, figure stuff out. But Mm -hmm. because you put up such an egregious showing, you had to get fired right away. You know, it just, it had to be done. Yeah, for sure. I just, you know, I wasn't expecting that. So I thought it would go throughout the rest of the season, Mm -hmm. but yeah, that definitely called for it. I don't even think Staley was expecting it in that post game press conference. You know, people were asking him like, do you think you're going to have a job tomorrow morning? Do you think you should have a job? And he was like, yeah, I do. I think I should have a job. Like, I mean, yeah, you have to say that you're not going (laughs) to say no, if you have any uh, backbone, but Minnesota at Cincinnati for the first Saturday game. Really good game. Cincinnati came back from a 17 0. Yeah, right? I mean, it was a pretty big deficit, especially in the fourth quarter. They scored, I think, 24, 21 or 24 points mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter. Jake Browning had another really good game, although he had a slow start. And it's been exactly one year since the Vikings came back from the 33 to nothing deficit that the Colts laid upon them yeah. last year on a Saturday. So, you know, it's karma. That Saturday, <laughs> you come so. back and you win that game, 36-33. This Saturday, you give it up and lose in overtime, mm-hmm. even though, you know, Cincinnati, I think, got the ball, but then they punted it, or, yeah, Minnesota got the ball, and I think they fumbled it. And, yeah, so kind of a crazy game, but a pretty good one. Then Pittsburgh at Indianapolis. Well, I guess, you know, if you want to I say actually anything. did not really have anything Sorry. to add to that one. <laughs> All good. This one just pisses me off, though. Pittsburgh at Indianapolis, obviously taking Pittsburgh. They go up 13 nothing. I'm a happy man. I'm like, all right, cool. That's as to be expected. Now just time to ice the game away. And then they just got absolutely throttled. Gardner Minshew with a fantastic game, very efficient. And, yeah, they just came back, roaring back, and never looked back after that. It's just tough to put any sort of confidence in Mitch Trubisky, man. Yeah. I, I never liked him when he was on the Bears, and I just – cannot find myself to yeah. bet on him to win a game even in Pittsburgh. He's just a not a productive QB. I don't think he's an effective leader. Not For a sure. fan of him. And so, therefore, Mason Rudolph will be making the start this upcoming week instead of Mitchell Trubisky. So oh, is down. he really? I know they yoinked him like in the fourth quarter there and put in Rudolph. Yeah. Um, I, I think he turned the ball over like right away. Yeah. But I'm surprised I mean, they're giving him the starting job. I'm honestly surprised they didn't. Because in 2020, Mason Rudolph started a bunch of games and he played really well. Like Mason yeah. Rudolph is one of the most experienced backup quarterbacks in the league. Mm-hmm. And after that one season, they just kind of put him back in his doghouse and he's yeah. never shown the light of day since. So I'm honestly surprised it took him this long because he wasn't that bad right. the year that he started, like eight games. So yeah, we'll see what he can do. I think they have a pretty tough game though. Mm-hmm. I think it's Cincinnati. So we'll see what happens yeah. there. Denver at Detroit. I didn't think Detroit would score this many points. I mean, De- Denver has a fantastic defense. It didn't show in this game at all. Detroit is just so lethal at home. I really think they're like Dallas in the sense that at home they're really good, probably going to win. But on the road, you just never know with them. 
Yeah. Um, other than Thanksgiving game, I'm, I think that they were uh, mm-hmm. at home for Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Yeah. Other than that game, I think that that statement definitely holds to be true. That one at home just was a, or the one on Thanksgiving was just a little fluky. Yeah. But yeah. I did pick Denver this week and obviously that was wrong. I, I don't know, man. I said like last week that Detroit was one of those teams that seemed hard for me to figure out. And like, I don't know. They just like lose like a couple of bozo games and then they go put up like 42 points. Yeah. And just, Jerry like, Goff a little, went nuts. Yeah. I just get a little flustered by them. Like, I don't, I don't know how to like approach games like that, but I don't know. I guess I got to consider that moving forward when Detroit's at home, I should be picking them. Yeah. And they're going to have a playoff game at home. Probably. Against, Most likely. Yeah. It could be the Rams, which would be nuts. Just think about yeah, that. that. Matt Stafford crazy. coming back to Detroit for a playoff game. Dude. I feel like Detroit's not going to win at home. I think I that, mean, that would just be revenge for Stafford. I don't think Stafford. anyone wants to play. I Honestly, I think it's more revenge for Jared Goff. You think? Uh, I mean, maybe. the Rams were the ones that traded him. I mean, I know it was a trade, but Stafford was viewed as the much better quarterback at that mm-hmm. time. And now it's not as clear cut. Yeah. But, yeah, that would be interesting. And that's exactly what the NFL wants as mm-hmm. well. So if you think the NFL is rigged, you know, maybe that could be an upside. It's like, well, you do get a good game out of it. That's probably what's going to happen then. I mean, wouldn't that be the three and the six? Yeah. So the two seed would play the seven seed, and the three seed would play the six seed, and the four seed would play the five seed. Mm-hmm. There you have it. I guess that's it. Bam. There you guys <laughs> have it. It's going to be Dallas at Tampa Bay. It's going to be the Rams at Detroit. And it's going to be, uh, let's say, let's just go with Seattle at uh who's wait i'm forgetting i forgot to <laughs> so san fran will probably have the buy oh then it'll be seattle at philadelphia oh yes probably okay. i think philadelphia will still win the division honestly because i think dallas actually man that's tough we'll get into that later anyways i just laid out the playoff slate for you we'll talk about that when the time gets closer mm-hmm. anywho the giants at new orleans giants come in after a three-game winning streak, but the train is stopped here. DeVito gets hurt, gets knocked out of the game, and New Orleans wins easily. Derek Carr with a pretty good game, finally. First game all season with three-plus touchdown passes, so good to see him, even though he's banged up like we talked about, just muscling through the pain and putting up some good numbers here. I think if DeVito played the full game, that the Do you Giants really think are, so? No, no. I mean, no, not, not <laughs> it wasn't actually. wasn't even close. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. It was just not a good performance from the Giants. Just another team that I I just don't get. Uh, you seem to know when the Giants are going to win and when they mm-hmm. aren't. Like, I dogged on them when you picked them for Green Bay, and then they pull off a win, and then I pick them <laughs> over a team that I would kind of put in a very similar, <laughs> like, standings against like green bay like i feel like new orleans and green bay are like roughly on equal footing to be honest so i'm like yeah. oh well maybe the giants can win at new orleans but nope Mm-mm. you got this Mm-mm. one so dude leave the giants in tampa bay to me <laughs> okay <laughs> i guess i will do that but yeah no that one's just a throwaway game and then chicago at cleveland this game i watched a lot of it you gave yourself the red here even though you picked cleveland oh did i oh man uh-oh Anyways, yeah, so we both picked Cleveland, unless you picked Chicago. I think you picked Cleveland, though, I right? I did pick Cleveland, yeah. Yeah, so it looked like most of the game Chicago was going to win, but they started to give it away in the second half. There were a couple just horrible plays for the Bears in this one. Of course, Robert Tanyan drops a touchdown, a long pass. At the bare minimum, it would have been a humongous pass. Then, at the end of the first half, Instead of going for the field goal, they try and go for a Hail Mary, which ends up in a pick. I, I just can't believe that decision. Like, why do you go for the Hail Mary when it's only like a 54-yard field goal, something that Cairo Santos should be able to make over half the time? Didn't understand that. This is just classic Bears coaching. It it's really just is, like yeah. what they that's always do to us, man. Flea Goose will be gone. <laughs> Flea Goose. Yeah, dude, that's who he is now. That's a cute that, little nickname. No, it's not. He's... Did you like scream that from the sidelines when you were like watching the Bears game <laughs> last Fleaver week? Goose. It almost sounds a little sensual, you know, Ooh. a little romantic. But <laughs> no, no, he's a goose. He's a f- absolute I've mallard. I've got worse words. What? A downright mallard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, that. So he'll be gone after the end of the year. This solidified that because there were so many decisions in this game that could have gone the other way, allowing the Bears to win. We get to the end of the game here now. Obviously, it comes down to Darnell Mooney's horrible drop. 
He should also be exterminated. And also, Justin Fields just did not play that great in this game. The two picks, however, are not his fault. Both of them were on Hail Marys. The second one should have been a touchdown. But you take those out of the game, he still didn't play very well. It was super inaccurate, super erratic. I mean, some throws were just, I mean, Trevor Lawrence, too, by the way, super erratic in that game against Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And they just gave it away despite picking off Joe Flacco three times on three throws that weren't Hail Mary. So they were a lot more valid, legitimate interceptions, in Mm -hmm. my opinion. But at the end of the day, you know, Baltimore just outlasted them and became the better team. But it just sucks as a Chicago and to see the Bears struggle as much as they are. But at the end of the day, they're getting a better draft pick out of it I and think good that, for the Browns. Yeah, I think that Justin could get exterminated at the end of this he year will. as well. And oh, then yeah. Yeah. he's gone there. And then they will assuming Carolina gets that yep. uh the last like place in the league. Um, I know they're a little bit closer since they did win this week, but yeah, that was um, not good. <laughs> yeah, but we don't I, like that. Yeah, we think the Bears will take Caleb Williams and then maybe snag Marvin Harrison. I think Marvin will be gone. You think he'll be gone by it's the time tough. they get their next pick? See, I don't know, man. What you do here, you might even not. You could, you could do so many things. You could get a quarterback, let Justin Fields play another year, and still trade back. In a sense, I mean, mm-hmm. there's so many options for the Bears because they have the first, like, they have two super high picks. Yeah. And there's still value for Justin Fields. Oh, they for could sure. trade him to Seattle or Atlanta or maybe Washington or whatever and get some good value out of him. A Definitely. couple, like, second round picks or so. So we'll see what they end up doing, but I do think Justin Fields needs to go. Mm-hmm. He might be able to have success elsewhere. We've seen that with a lot of quarterbacks in the past go somewhere mm-hmm. else and have success, but. At Chicago, I think his time's come to a close here, even if he does play decently over the next few games, which are winnable. I just don't think they really have a bearing on the overall career we've seen from him so far over the last few years in Chicago. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, the Bears are out of the playoff race now, so it it shouldn't even really matter. Yeah, they really should be focusing on losing. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Atlanta at Carolina. I did kind of like Carolina in this game. I feel like, yeah, they were bound to win the game, especially against the horrible I think you did kind of like say that. You were like, I, you know, Carolina, I don't think they're going to go like 1-16. No, so no. you're like, I could see this being one that they sneak out, but I, I mean, am going to take it. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely one of the more winnable yeah. games they could have had. And they almost – I mean, they should have not won this game. Atlanta, Bijan Robinson fumbled. Desmond Ritter with a horrible interception deep into Carolina's territory. Mm-hmm. It was – a horrible showing from Atlanta and the reason why their coach will also be fired soon here as well. Arthur mm-hmm. Smith will be gone. Trust me by the end of the year or by the end of the season, this game was in the grasp and it was much, much needed to stay in the race for the NFC South. And everyone's been talking about how, Oh my God, it sucks that, you know, we have to have a winner out of the NFC South. It's just, it's not fair. They shouldn't have a winner. Cause all these other teams are better. There's a chance they get two teams in, dude. Like, there's a chance the Saints and the Bucks make the playoffs because their records are just better than like most of the other teams in the NFC. I know. So you gotta <laughs> stop. That pisses me off, man. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy to think that both of them are seven and seven now, but you do have to give them credit because they're winning these games in the same conference as everyone else. So mm-hmm. all the NFC slander talk, I think, has to come to a close. Because whoever does win that division, even though they won't have the best record out of the division winners, they still will have a better record than most of the wild card teams. So, mm-hmm. yeah, just, I don't know, it kind of irks me a little bit. But anyways, yeah, I mean, good for Carolina, I guess. It's it's not something I would be super thrilled about, though, because, <laughs> you know, you looked horrible while doing it still. Yeah, it was just like some nasty weather going on in that game. It felt like one of those raccoon games. Just not a whole lot else that you know you can say yeah, about this. I don't this, know why they're not starting Tyler Heineke because Taylor or whatever his name is. But Taylor Heineke, yeah. Desmond Ritter is horrible. Yep. He's got to go. Yeah. Jets at Miami. Oh, you skipped Tampa and Green Bay. Oh, I like this game, yeah, too. Yeah, dude, you is, had a saucy, cerebral pick here. I was saying my pick was goofy, I remember, in the pod, but – because I just thought when, Tampa, when you bet on them, bro, you're ninety five percent accurate. I am, yeah, I am. I'm really good with Tampa guys. I have this website that showed me that Tampa Bay is my most profitable team to bet on. And over the last ten times I bet on them, I'm nine zero and one. So that's pretty good. 
But yeah, I just I started to think I was feeling goofy because Tampa is coming up to this cold weather at Green Bay, coming off an embarrassing loss to the Giants. Like surely Green Bay bounces back, but I'm good. I'm glad that I stayed with my gut because Tampa Bay just ran through them. There were multiple times where Green Bay answered, but Tampa just answered again. And they couldn't keep up with Baker Mayfield. Just went absolutely insane on them. And it shouldn't have even been this close. Baker Mayfield fumbled on like the three or four yard line of Green Bay or of Tampa Bay's. So Green Bay got an easy, cheap touchdown early in the game. Mm -hmm. If they don't get that, this game is not even remotely close. And it's a bigger blowout than it was. Baker Mayfield played phenomenally. Green Bay's defense looked a little bit scary when I thought they were actually decent. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I really liked what I saw out of Tampa this week, bro. I mean, their offense came alive under a QB that I didn't really think had it in them to lead their yeah. team to, you know, a, like what did they put up, like 34 points this week or something yes, like that? Chris Godwin had an absolute week and a half. I think he tossed up over 100 yards and a touchdown, uh, maybe like eight receptions or something like that. Good I think week. it was even more than that. I mean, it was a humongous game for him. Yeah, definitely a good week for him. Uh, Mike Evans was a little bit quiet. but uh, Yeah, but touchdown, though. Yeah, nice touchdown out of him. Still, it was just surprising to see a little bit of a flip flop because normally Evans is the one with all the yeah. yardage. And I'm glad to see it because yeah. I mean Godwin's very talented. For and sure, they should have been getting him more involved. Yeah. during some of those losses. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Jets at Miami. Really disappointed in the Jets this entire season. What a disaster they are. Miami down Tyree Kill and they still put up 30 and shut out the Jets. Well, a good bounce back for them, but it really does kind of make it sting a little bit more that they lost to the Titans because now if they lose one of these next two games, very tough games, Dallas and the Ravens, they lose one of those, then the final game, assuming Buffalo wins out, will be for the division. So mm -hmm. you think you were in control this entire time. You finally you get down to week 18, Buffalo beats you, you're suddenly a wild card team, and you're probably facing a team like, you might even be facing Buffalo again. Dude, that you would never just be know. insane. That would just Same be a last wild year when sequence Buffalo, of events. Yeah, Buffalo and Miami played first round of the playoffs, and mm -hmm. Buffalo won that game. I mean, Buffalo has Miami's number. Miami did beat them once in the regular season last year, but other than that, Buffalo's owned them. So if you're Miami, you're kind of you're kind of screwed either way because you could still face them if you win your division. That's the suckiest part. Yeah, you could win your division, face them as a wild card. So. Mm -hmm. Could be a little scary for them, even though, I mean, you would get them home. But, yeah, good for them. Love seeing Jalen Waddle go off as well. Yeah, dude, he had a fantastic week in Tyreek's absence. I know we kind of talked about that. We actually said that the Jets would cover the spread if Tyreek was gone. Yeah, I mean. I, they really just put a beat down on the Jets, even really without surprising. Tyreek. Yeah, I did not I expect know. that. I mean, especially after the Jets last week yeah. put a beat down on Houston in what I think is a good defense. Right. And Zach Wilson, I know he got out of this game. He got hurt, but I mean, he wasn't playing well. And it's I just, mean, Zach so Wilson's not. Yeah, it's crazy to me that team as a whole, disgusting. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers needs to come in as their savior next year and take him to the promised land. Yeah, no, he hopefully he will do that next year. But yeah. he's, you know, you can write him off for this season. Yeah. Jets are out of playoff contention, yep. so Rodgers is not going to play. Ain't no way. Kansas City at New England was close for a little bit. New England actually might have had a lead for a point in this yeah. game mm -hmm. after a couple. I think it was 10-7 well, New England. I think so. Point. Mahomes had one pick. The second pick he had was, oh, my God, it's laughable. Did you see it? He throws it to Kadarius Tony, and Kadarius Tony just, like, hot potatoes it <laughs> into the air yeah. to one of the Patriots offenders. It's almost like I remember Devontae Adams almost did that against the Lions. I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, sometimes if you're not going to catch it, you just got to like let it drop to the ground right? because bobbling it like just gives someone Mooney, else a bro. chance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, well, for him, you might as well try whatever you can to catch that. I mean, Darnell yeah. Mooney, fuck you. <laughs> you should have <laughs> caught that ball, dude. Anyways, yeah, I mean, it was hilarious because Kadarius Tony has been making plays like that the entire year. He'd have one of those in the first game against Detroit where he bobbled one into yeah. a pick. And that's when the pick six actually. Yeah. We were like, when did, uh, I didn't know that the chiefs receivers were playing for Detroit. That's what you said. Yes, week one. Exactly. <laughs> and so, I mean, you know, it's whoever they play, then just trades them to Kansas City's next opponent. Yeah. You know, so the Patriots have traded Kadarius Tony to the Raiders this week. And you know, <laughs> I'm sure so. he'll make one play for the opposing team again. Yep. 
I don't know why they're still playing them, but I think at the end of the day, it's because they got no one better. Yeah, exactly. It's just embarrassing what the the options are that the Chiefs yeah. have. I mean, Rasheed Rice has emerged as yeah, the top target. Yeah, he's fine. He's good. Kelsey has been quiet. Yeah, he was very quiet last week. He's uh, getting old. I know. A shockingly disappointing season just for him all around. It's I Taylor mean, Swift. <laughs> yeah, he's all he could think about out there is he's running is Taylor Swift. I know, dude. He's got a. Uh, he was actually the most televised person during football games, like. In terms of brand deals, like in commercials, really, he that had makes like sense. 375 appearances, and I think the next most was Mahomes, and then <laughs> after course. that was like the State Farm guy, like Jake just from State Farm, yeah, 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 just whoever owns that. But uh, yeah, so Kelsey's got all of this commercial TV time, yet he's not even putting up the big boy numbers in the league anymore. Yeah, so he that's needs to not a good look for you. I remember when Dak was doing all his commercials yeah. and Baker Mayfield as well, and they were mm-hmm. not playing great, and they got a lot of slander for it. Right. Houston at Tennessee. What a horrible game again here, man. If you're Tennessee, you squandered this one away, and now congratulations, Mike Frabel, head coach. You are on the hot seat. This was a game you had to win going up against a backup quarterback. You're up 13 points, and you give it away in the last few minutes of the game. And then in overtime, really laughable. And still, I mean, Will Levis, I've been saying this since he came in. That four-touchdown game against Atlanta was a fluke and a half. He ain't that good. He's not that good. He's not playing well. And I think if Ryan Tannehill played in this game, they would have won. I think if Ryan Tannehill played in a bunch of these other games, they would have won. I think Ryan Tannehill would have beat the Steelers. So I don't know why they continue to throw Levis out there when he clearly is just, he's not been that great. Even against the Dolphins, I mean, he made plays, but he still also had a pick six in that game. So I agree with I, on that. I agree with you that Levis is not great. However, I think you're overestimating Tannehill's capabilities. I know that you liked him in many years well, past, but I think dude, he's he, coming back this week. He started earlier this season and he sucked every week, man. He, he it's did. because of the situation around him, I think. You know, <laughs> if you put Will Lavis in those games, we'll never know, but I don't think he would have been that great. What do you mean exactly? Like the situation around him? Like, aren't they experiencing the similar situations like at QB? But. The opponents were different. It was at the beginning of the year. He's trying to get used to DeAndre Hopkins. He's got a new offensive line. Derrick Henry's Mm -hmm. getting older. He's not as explosive. I mean, you're looking at Derrick Henry's numbers this year compared to years past. They're not even close. Yeah. I mean, this game he was absolutely horrible. And when he used to own the Texans. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Texans used to be one of his childs, one of his children. Dude, along he, would, with the Jaguars. he would drop like 200-plus yards would, in every game he faced on, against yeah, the Texans. on all the AFC South teams, yeah. honestly. And he's just not been that good. So I think that if you're Tannehill, man, you kind of – I mean, you're going to be a great guy. I know he always is supportive of the team and whoever's playing at quarterback. But – I feel like you got screwed. I think there are a couple guys like this. I mean, Drew Locke's a little similar to this, in my opinion. I think that if you were to play out both of their seasons in alternate universes, Ryan Tannehill would have the better record at the end of it all. I think it'd be pretty close. I mean, I'm honestly just not a huge fan of either of those guys. Um, I mean, yeah, I think ultimately you do need someone else in there. Like right. I don't think either yeah. one is the long-term option. Agreed. I think Tannehill's window was the last few years when he put MVP numbers up in like 2020 or 2021. That's when you mm-hmm. needed to go win a Super Bowl. But they squandered those opportunities, and I know Tannehill didn't play great in those playoff games, but yeah. those were their opportunities. Now you need to move on from both of them, in my opinion. I mean, I know mm-hmm. they'll continue to give Will Levis opportunities, but I just think the – Four touchdown games was like a red heron or whatever you call it. Just like a fluke. Mm -hmm. Then we have San Francisco at Arizona. I really thought Arizona had a good chance of covering it. It seemed like they were. I mean, they were leading in this game. Yes, keeping it close. But San Fran, man, they don't let up. Like you think, I had Brock Purdy like in multiple games this Mm -hmm. year. They're up by 20 plus. They're up by like multiple scores. I'm like, all right, this is the point where Brock Purdy comes out or they just run the ball and they stop throwing it with him. But nope, we're in the like, beginning of the fourth quarter and he throws more touchdown passes. Yeah. I mean, he's still they're still going hard in later parts of these games mm-hmm. when they don't really have to. I know San Fran you know, gave up some points there at the end of the game, but just really impressive out of them, and I hope they stay healthy because I think they do have the best shot to win the Super Bowl this year, which I would love to see. And I think that Christian McCaffrey should be the MVP 
even though I do like Brock Purdy. But I just think, I mean, it does. It has to be a little bit more of Christian McCaffrey than it is Brock Purdy because so many mm-hmm. of his touchdowns did go to Christian McCaffrey. Right. Yeah, San Fran's pretty much like the inverse of teams like Pittsburgh or Chicago in that those teams cannot close out a game, whereas no. <laughs> San Fran just continues to close out games. Even those ones that are close, they just, just never take their foot off the gas and they just pile on the points, yeah, do whatever really it is did. to just defeat their opponent, just really take them out of the game. Um, to the point about Christian McCaffrey, I do certainly think that he is – in the running for MVP. However, I think that Tyreek should be in the running as well. I think he should be. I don't think he'll win, though. You don't think? Especially after missing the game. Yeah, I mean, Christian missed a game, though, too, didn't he? I don't think so, actually. No? Uh, I, yeah, I, so. I know he was like, maybe it was questionable, was questionable. and then it was a Monday night game. he and got he knocked out of a game, so there was yeah. half of it that okay. was missed. But I just, I don't think Tyreek has had the production mm-hmm. now at this point unfortunately compared to McCaffrey but hey I mean I guess if McCaffrey gets hurt that opens up the door for right Tyreek but at that point I think it opens the door more for Brock Purdy mm-hmm. so we'll see what happens there but good stuff all around Washington at the Rams weird game it ended up looking closer than it really was the Rams just jumped out and kind of destroyed them mm-hmm. really ran the ball well and Stafford played well again. Yeah, other than Kyron's fumbles, I mean, he yeah. was still putting up good yardage right. for the day. And Washington, I thought, was just going to be able to kind of put some more points up on the board because the Rams' defense has not been very good mm-hmm. this entire season. But Sam Hall had one of his bad games, and he honestly has not been very good since the start of December. He's had some really rough outings. So kind of scary for if you're a Washington fan. You think you had your guy, and now he's put up some stinkers. Really don't know at this point. But Jacoby Brissett comes in and accumulates almost, well, more passing yards than Sam Howell did in just six pass attempts than 22 or whatever that Sam Howell had. I mean, it was laughable. Like, how does Jacoby Brissett perform so well, finally getting Terry McLaurin the ball? It's like they turned on a switch. You know, you put Jacoby Brissett in there. Oh, wow, look, Terry McLaurin's going off again like he ever used to. And they're actually putting points up on the board. They actually look effective. So Sam Hall, not a good look for you at all. And, I mean, hopefully it's just the pains of Mm -hmm. (laughs) growing up, the puberty that he is enduring (laughs) as a football player. Yeah, that's frustrating for me, man, because I put Howell as my start of the week this week. I really like this matchup against the Rams. I just thought that it was going to be more of a back-and-forth type of game. Both of the defenses I don't think are great and I thought there was going to be a lot of points scored so yeah. not, not only did Howell have a crappy game he gets yoinked but <laughs> also the over under did not or I, I picked the over 49 and it ends at a final score of 48 so that yeah. missed to just a tough yeah, game that, for me this that week does suck yeah I really thought it would be higher scoring as well mm-hmm. Dallas at Buffalo thought this you know would be a better game I thought Buffalo would win but not in the fashion they did Thought it would be one of Josh Allen's superhero games. Yeah. Instead, it was James Cook's superhero games. I mean, they just ran the ball down Dallas's throat, and they made him like it. It was a embarrassing showing for Dallas. And I really thought they caught a break because the weather was actually decent in Buffalo. It did get a little rainy, but in this time of year, you're expecting Buffalo to be super cold, maybe even snowy. Right. So I think if you're Dallas, you really kind of squandered a good opportunity. But it's all good. You're still in the playoffs. You still might win the division. And this is a tough spot on the road against a really, really hot mm-hmm. ball flow team right now. Yeah, I think, you know, Dak kind of played himself out of the MVP conversation if he was you yeah, know, even he trickling into it at all. Um, but, yeah, just a shocking performance out of them. I mean, their one touchdown on the day was a weird rushing touchdown from CD, yeah, which was basically garbage, garbage time. time. It didn't yeah. even matter anymore. Um yeah, I I mean I did really want Buffalo to win this game, and you know of course they yeah they did, but it was just shocking. I think it's just what you said. Dallas does not seem to be the the same team on the road as they are at home. No, all. no, and especially against winning teams, they're only one and three against winning teams. Yeah, which is pretty bad. Right. So we'll see how that goes down in the playoffs. I mean, who knows? They might get Tampa Bay, who's not. Or barely a winning team, nine and eight, maybe even eight and nine. They Mm -hmm. might even win that game. Baltimore at Jacksonville. Man, 
if if you're a Jaguars fan, you must be in such agony watching this game because as someone who's not a Jacksonville fan necessarily, I was miserable. This game was horrible to watch. My God, Trevor Lawrence, what are you doing? Some of his throws were so erratic. It's like his accuracy was often maddening. It's like you set his accuracy <laughs> to poor. I mean, some of his throws were just sailing left and right and over the heads. And, of course, he had two fumbles. The first fumble, he's, like, trying to slide. And instead of sliding, mm-hmm. like, he drops the ball in between his feet. Yeah. Second fumble, he's, like, getting sacked. and Trying to get just, rid of the ball. Yeah, and... it's like, dude, just take the sack. Yeah, play yeah, smarter. horrible. I mean, he's not looking like this generational talent that no. he's supposed to be. And I don't know if maybe this is still the lingering effects of be. that injury from yeah. two weeks ago. But, right. I mean, if you didn't even sit out a single game for this injury, I can't imagine no. that it would truly be that bad. Yeah, I mean, if he's playing hurt, like, he should have taken the week off. He lost yeah. to Cleveland anyways. It was going to be a tough spot to win regardless. Really disappointing. He did have some nice runs on that final drive, but... Man, I think this was a super winnable game. They even missed two field goals, which was super annoying as it was. And even at the end of the first half, they got down to like the second yard, like the two yard line off of a big touchdown or a big pass. Mm -hmm. And then Trevor Lawrence passes it, I think, to Calvin Ridley and it gets tackled in bounds. Yeah. So they weren't able to get anything off. He got tackled in bounds without a timeout. So they weren't able to kick a field goal and they didn't have another play in them for a touchdown try. So, and that's exactly what happened against Houston when they played a few weeks ago as Mm -hmm. well. They got down to the one yard line and they tried to run it and they didn't have any time left. You've just got to be smarter than that in those like clutch moments. I mean, that reminds me of like what the giants did. Like, I think it was, it was earlier in the season. I don't know if you remember this, but like Brian Dable was going off on, I think it was Daniel Jones at the time Mm -hmm. that he just, it was right before halftime, and they were marching down the field, about to score. I think, I think they were that like was right Tyrod in... Taylor, actually, oh, was against it? Oh, Buffalo. Yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe it was Tyrod Taylor. But, yeah, and they're about to score, and then yeah. they just they don't even yeah. get it. It goes to halftime. I yeah, mean, that was against Buffalo because if they kicked the field yeah, goal, yeah. then they could have kicked another one right. to win by one point. Anyways, <laughs> oh, man, the power is struggling here in the household. That's a little weird. But, anywho... We don't run on that time of electricity, so we're going to be just fine. (laughs) But, yeah, I mean, I can't believe it happened twice now within, like, five games. Trevor Lawrence, though, should not have thrown that ball. He could have clearly seen that was going to be tackled in bounds. So, I don't know. You should have just taken a shot to the end zone. Mm -hmm. And if not, then you kick a field goal. I mean, it's really awful. They could have easily won this game because Baltimore did not play that well. And... What's his face? Lamar Jackson threw a horrible interception in it. So really, really strange. But moving on from that to Monday Night Football, crazy game last night, Philadelphia at Seattle. Drew Locke with a 92-yard drive at the end of the game to win it. Really surprising because it felt like the Eagles were in control the whole game. And it didn't even seem that interesting because you never really felt like Seattle was in a spot to win. And then suddenly they are. Yeah, I mean, that was just crazy. And it just frustrates me because I had that sneaky feeling that Seattle was going to win that game. I I remember when I was making my picks last week, I originally put Seattle and then when we were making the pod, I changed it to Philly cuz I was like there's no way that Philly is dropping 3 straight. Yeah. And somehow, I mean they do, but I mean they shouldn't have. But that was just a crazy ending. DK just went nuts on that last drive there for Seattle. He, yeah, had, he had some, some elite crazy catches, bro. Catches. It was just unbelievable. Probably then, lucky ones, too, oh, against dude, the for hip sure. or whatever yeah. it was. You I mean, know? that was crazy. Just incredible ball control out of DK, man. And then Jackson Smith and Jigba with an awesome game winner there. Good for him, man. That's just that's great to see yeah. for a young guy like that. Very happy for him. But, yeah, tough loss for us both there on Philly, but... Seattle's just a tough place to play at home. Yeah, it definitely is. It was a loud environment there. And, man, I'm happy for Drew Locke. He definitely struggled in Denver and deserved to get traded. But he looked really good in this game. And he might even be better than Geno Smith because we know that Geno struggled a little bit Mm -hmm. during the last few games before his injury. Anyways, moving on to our Week 15 start and sit recaps. 
I'll let you take it away. You had some pretty good picks this week. Yeah, not bad. I did say to start Kenneth Walker, which he did have a nice game last night against the Eagles. He had a touchdown. I think he had 86 yards, so good week from Kenneth. Sam Howell was not a start, but we already talked about that. And I said to sit Khalil Herbert and Deonta Foreman, uh, the foreskin. And that was a fantastic play, bro. They yeah. both sucked. That <laughs> Cleveland defense, man, they're so lethal. I think Roshan Johnson was the best running back for the on the day um, for the yeah, Bears. Yeah, he did have a yeah. really good game in terms of <laughs> yards per carry. Yeah, but other than that, though, the two I said to sit, Herb and the foreskin, they sucked. Man, the foreskin so, put a foreskin type of number as well. Yeah. I think six Neg- carries for negative six <laughs> yards. It's like, holy Dude, his cow. top His top carry on the day was zero yards, which is just <laughs> egregious. Dude, you and I had a better game rushing than I know. That's a foreskin. That's just unreal. <laughs> for me, I thought I had a decent week. I feel like you gave me a lot of yellow here. Portland <laughs> Southern had a decent game. He did. Yeah, it right? was solid. He had, I think, six catches for 71 yards, but it was his fourth lowest total on the season. So, like, still a good stat line yeah. on the day. It's just, like, in Honestly, terms of his relative productivity. Yeah. Well, I mean, he had more yards than most of his weeks. He, he just had no didn't touchdown. Have that touchdown. Right. Drake London, not good. I just thought, I mean, the weather I was not expecting to be as bad in Carolina. And Zach Moss did have a receiving touchdown, but he still didn't have a ton of production. But – I did think he would struggle a little bit more against the better Pittsburgh defense. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to run through my bets because they weren't great this week. I guess that's just a lot of averages because the week before I had a really good week. Arizona almost covered the 13 and a half, didn't. Of course, we already talked about Jacksonville. They could have easily won the game or come within the three and a half point spread. Washington missed out on their cover by like a point and a half. So that's disappointing. Giants and New Orleans over 37. I just thought the Giants would be able to put up a few more points in this game, but when DeVito gets knocked out, it's going to be tough. And then in terms of the college football bowl games, I'm really struggling to pick these games because there are so many opt-outs. It really is a circus with these. You have no idea what's going on, Mm -hmm. and it's why college football needs to get reformed a little bit. But Jacksonville State, minus three against University of Louisiana. That pushed. They won in overtime, I think, 37-34. Miami of Ohio did cover the plus six against Appalachian State in the Cure Bowl, even though they lost. Super low scoring, ugly game. Also ugly, New Mexico State's performance against Fresno. They didn't even come close to winning, let alone covering. That was highly disappointing. Although I think their quarterback was playing a little hurt, Diego Pavia. And then UCLA easily takes care of Boise State and covers the minus four. So that was a win for me. Western Kentucky, I don't know if you saw this. They were down 28 to nothing against Old Dominion. No way. And fought all the way back. They won 38 35, right? Dude. That's Can you crazy. That, that, that reminds me of like the Colts in like the, the Minnesota yeah. game. Their quarterback had five touchdowns, I think, wow. 350 some yards, over 50. He was like 40 of 52. He was crazy that at is one wild. point. I think he started like 11 for 11. So crazy game and super high scoring. That was probably one of the more fun bowl games because all these other ones are just kind of lame in my opinion. But yeah. you had a great week in terms of the, of course, over on that Vegas <laughs> In terms game. of the one week, yeah. But my other bets absolutely sucked. Um, yeah, I just want to talk about that again, that over double the actual score yeah. of my over 33 and a half. Absolutely cooked on that one but i did not cook on the rest hooked on i got hooked on washington at the rams over 49 finished that at sucks. 48 denver money line they just absolutely decide to take a nap during the lions game and then the giants plus six did not hit either devito got yoinked or not yoinked but he got a little hurt, hurt and yeah. then uh yeah that game just got away from the giants yep. so tough week there all good we'll bounce back the law of averages yeah week 16 let's ride new orleans at the rams for week 16's thursday night football featurette i'm gonna take the rams here i think a lot of people are kind of liking new orleans but we've seen them to be super inconsistent they'll go out struggle against the falcons but then they'll destroy the giants yeah you know they'll struggle against the buccaneers go out there and destroy the patriots you know so they're Mm -hmm. just super spotty so I am taking the Rams here, who are also one of the hottest teams in the league right now, along with Buffalo. Love how they're playing. I do think it'll be a little bit more of a battle than they've had over the last few weeks, mm-hmm. but 
they're battle tested. You know, they had that game against the Ravens where they almost won and lost in overtime. So I think they're ready for this game. It's also a huge game in terms of the wild card standings. Both teams are seven and seven, battling for one of those wild card spots. Both of them need it. Although I think the Rams need it more because New Orleans still has a shot to win the division. Right. Yeah, I like that pick a lot. I'm also going to take the Rams, but I do think this is going to be a very close game. One of my best bets is actually for New Orleans to cover the spread. Um, 97% of the public here betting on the Rams That's a to lot cover of minus four. That's a lot of Dude, people. it's reminiscent of last week yeah. when 98% of the public was betting the under on the Chargers game, and we know what happened there. So I could see this game ending where it could be you know, a three-point game that New Orleans ends up covering. Right. Uh, so I like that pick a lot, but yeah, we're going to roll with the Rams because Stafford and Cup duo is alive again, dude, and I, I love to see it. I need that to continue this week because I got Cup in my fantasy league. He needs to put up a 30-berg for me Oh, this week. man, I would love that. Dude, that'd be huge. I know you've got him. receptions. Em. Oh, dude, that would be electrifying. 15 receptions, 92 yards, and two touchdowns. Dude, that would be a great game. I'd be very happy with that. that. I know would you like would be too for your, burger. for your guillotine. Oh, league. Yeah, yeah, I need that badly. Moving on, another Saturday game, Cincinnati on Saturday, and so is Pittsburgh. Cincinnati at Pittsburgh. So a couple weeks ago, they played in Cincinnati. First time Jake Browning started. and They lost 16-10. Yeah. Or was this the second time? Oh, I no, think it was his first. No, it was, it was his, his first, first time because then he played against Jacksonville. Yeah. I'm going to take Cincinnati this time. I know you took Cincinnati last time, and they didn't come through, but it ended up being really weird that they didn't because ever since that game, Pittsburgh's lost, and Cincinnati's done nothing but win. Mm-hmm. So I think those trends will continue. I don't like Mason Rudolph, really. I mean, I think he might be better than Trubisky. I mean, I don't even know about that, but you got to start him when Trubisky's been playing the way he has. And it's hard to bet against Jake Browning right now, even with Jamar Chase out. Yeah, I agree. I'm also rolling Cincinnati. I do have kind of a hot take for you, and I don't think you're going to like it. Oh, no. Dude, what if like Cincinnati just uh, continues to ride the Jake Browning train all the way to the playoffs and you know maybe a little championship action, Yeah. maybe a Super Bowl? Do they <laughs> even need Burrow? Do they cut him for the salary cap? Could, no. that, could that be the hottest take of all time? That is a super hot take. Bro, what if what if Browning is the answer, a different JB? No, I mean, if he, I mean, he's playing really well, but then you just trade Drake Browning. Why? Drake Browning is not as good as Joe Burrow. But, I mean, is he not, though? I mean, I if he carries proven. him to a Super Bowl and, like... Well, I don't think he will. But what if he did, though? That's, like, the hot take in question. I think if, even if he did... It, it's more of a reflection of the coaching staff and the team. I would think him. I would think they would trade Burrow because he's got the fifty five million dollar a year contract, and then they would have a massive like add on to their salary cap. So then they could I mean, use it to acquire even more talent. It would have talent. to be considered, but I don't think that would happen. Joe Burrow. Yeah. If they had Joe Burrow through the stretch of games, they wouldn't have lost at all. They would have beat the Ravens. They would have beaten Pittsburgh. They would have beat. Whoever else they lost to. I don't know that you can say confidently they would have beat the Ravens. I mean, if the he Ravens, didn't go out that game, I mean, I know I don't know if it would have been. I mean, I think they would have won that game. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, but like who we can't really know for sure. But I just think that Jake Browning has been great, but he hasn't done anything tremendously impressive. I mean, he's only played for three, four games. He started four games now. But, like, what if it just he just kept winning? He could be like the Brock Purdy of 2023. I mean, it's certainly possible. I know I you like would him. like that, though, because no, I know you like Burrow so I do, much. But, dude. like, you look at Cincinnati and you look at Jake Browning. I mean, who's he beating? Third string quarterback for Minnesota, Nick Mullins. You bought, beat. Mitch Trubisky, or no. No, you didn't beat Mitch Trubisky. You lost to, well, I guess that was Kenny Pickett at the time. You that beat was his first career start, though. Okay. That one's a write-off. We can allow that. They beat Gardner Minshew, another backup quarterback for the Colts. So, if you beat Cincinnati, or if you beat Kansas City this week, then we can have a conversation. Okay. Or if next week, when they play Kansas City next week, we can yeah. have a conversation about that. Okay, we will revisit that. If on, he uh, plays well. Yeah. 
I mean, I think that he's certainly gotten value now, but nowhere mm-hmm. close to Joe Burrow. Right. Buffalo at Chargers here. I mean, you could say a thing, same thing about Easton Stick. Well, no, if- I mean, Easton <laughs> Stick is garbage, dude. <laughs> Easton Stick, he should just be poking his stick just around <laughs> a tree and, I don't know, finding a branch to live on because he's... I mean, he played well against the uh, Raiders. A couple well, turnovers. Bro, he did Three not touchdowns. play well when they go down 49-0. to That's all his defense, though. I mean, he did have a, I think, pick six or a fumble six, but he had a productive game. I mean, he had a performance worthy to have won. He did. He <laughs> Bro, had, come on He had now. like 265 yards and three touchdowns. Dude, all that came when the Raiders yoinked all their starters and put in their fourth-string cornerbacks yeah. for their defense and just let Easton Stick feel I mean, good like, about himself. One of them. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, Easton Stick could have a little juice to him. I don't think could he's got a little juice. bison North Dakota action up <laughs> Dude, there. You know, no. you just never know. I don't think so. Maybe that's the hottest take of them all, hotter than the Jake Browning take. Yeah, no, trust me. I don't believe that. I like, I mean, Justin Herbert's far better, and Joe Burrow's far better than Jake Browning, but it's cute, cute stories. All yeah. these little backup quarterbacks. Gardner Minshew's cute. Case Keenum's cute, but they are not better than their starters. Right. Maybe Gardner Minshew's better than Anthony Richardson, but that's a conversation for another day. I'm going to take Buffalo here, though. Yeah, dude, I think Buffalo is the obvious pick. They're still fighting for that playoff spot, and this yep. seems like just a easy pick. Although I know you like to bet on the teams that after they fire their head coach, they feel so juiced, <laughs> but not this week. No, not for this one. Buffalo has to win this week. Yeah, I mean, maybe if Justin Herbert was playing, but definitely not with the Stickman. Yeah. Washington at the Jets. This is your raccoon game of the week here. I'm going to take Washington, but I don't feel really good about it at all. Could totally see the Jets winning, especially at home. I think it's going to be Trevor Simeon starting. He's actually not bad, and Washington's defense is not good. So I could totally see the Jets winning, but for whatever reason, I just feel it in me that Washington will bounce back. Yeah, I think that's kind of where my head's at with this one, too. Washington just kind of feels like the better pick. It just seems like, I don't even know, is Sam Howell playing or no? Even if Yeah, he's, I think he is going to play. Yeah, I mean, regardless of whether or not he does, I just feel like their team seems like they'd be a little bit better. I just like don't like the Jets quarterback action. I know that you said that he's okay. Yeah. But I'm not a fan of Simeon. Yeah, I mean he's definitely, you know, he's third string or whatever for a reason. So And even if you know, if Zach Wilson were playing, I still wouldn't love him. Oh, dude. I'd I mean, like him even worse, I think. He's Zach just Wilson so inconsistent. is just disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Detroit at Minnesota. I like Detroit a lot in this one. Minnesota played well against the Bengals, but Nick Mullins, you know, turned the ball over a couple times and ultimately cost them the game. And I think even though they're at home, Detroit should be able to take advantage of the momentum they garnered against Denver and take care of Minnesota here and then in two weeks again. Yeah, I'm also going to take Detroit. However, it scares me that I'm picking them on the road because it seems like when I pick them on the road, they have a tendency to lose and then... You know, they they seem to be that at home kind right. of team. Yeah, I mean, I definitely if they're going to lose any of these games, it could yeah. be this one. But it seems like they should take advantage of Nick Mullins at QB. For just sure. too inexperienced, you know, unless he just comes in and has a game like Jake Browning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't foresee that no, happening. No. Cleveland at Houston, another one super tough for me to pick, especially not knowing CJ Stroud's status. I do think I mean they don't even know. I feel like they really would like him to play. This I is would a expect huge him game. to. I mean, it's just a concussion, no? But he's still having headaches, according to the last thing I read I mean, today. CJ, I love you, bro, but like you got to man up a little <laughs> bit. Don't be a it's, pansy. This I mean, just it's a not even headache. about that, dude. Like he's got a for his overall mental, neurological health. Like even if he wants to play, he's got to be cleared to play so yeah. that he doesn't have further neurological damage. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think that. He wants to be out there for the guys. They want him to be out there, but it does come down to if he gets cleared or not. It is a big game for wild card standings, even though Cleveland's kind of cemented themselves in there. If Houston were to lose, it would not be good for them. I'm going to take Cleveland here. Houston screwed me over the last time I picked them against the Jets, and so Mm -hmm. I've just made up my mind I'm not going to pick them for the rest of the year. (laughs) That's fair. Yeah, I think Cleveland's probably the better pick here. I am going to roll with Houston just because they pulled off a win last week. Um, even without C.J. Stroud. And the 
the Browns defense turned over the ball, or sorry, the Browns offense turned over the ball way too much for my liking right. last week. I mean, I do not like seeing Joe Flacco throw three picks, regardless yeah, they were of whether or not. He actually should have had like five. Yeah. There were a couple <laughs> dropped. <laughs> yeah, so I don't like that kind of, uh, you know, offensive play there. So we're going to roll with Houston, but uh, Cleveland pick is still a good one. Green Bay at Carolina. A little scary here for Green Bay, even though I'm going to take them. They're losing a couple games. Carolina's won now. Their defense is not horrible. Maybe Bryce Young finds a little momentum to carry into this game against a Green Bay defense that has been exposed now by Baker Mayfield and Tommy DeVito. I still like him to win, like I said, even though it's on the road, man. I'm just I need Green Bay to pull through for me in terms of fantasy with that defense of theirs. I just think they need to have a bounce back week after some really embarrassing losses, especially one at home there against Tampa. Yeah, as long as Adam Thielen can get a, a touchdown for us in uh, yeah. my fantasy league. We can allow then, that. Yeah, and then the only touchdown. Yeah, that's fine. I'd be okay <laughs> with that if he, you know, throws up like eighty yards and a touchdown out there of Thielen. Go. And then Green Bay still wins because I'm going to take Green Bay as well here. Um, Carolina Can Thielen fumble for me though. Pardon? Can Thielen fumble? I would for me? really strongly <laughs> prefer him not to, bro. I I cannot afford any Thielen fumbles. Okay, we'll just take the ball from Bryce Young then. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. But yeah, Green Bay. Um, they're not losing to a team who's only got two wins here. Carolina yeah. hardly even won last week. Bro, they their two wins are like the most flukiest wins ever. They didn't really deserve they beat to win Houston. Either of those. <laughs> yeah, I mean they beat Houston by three, I think, and then they beat the Falcons by two. I mean, there's no way that Yeah, that's a know. tough point differential there. Yeah, Green Bay should be able to win this game. Seattle at Tennessee. I kinda wanna take s- Tennessee here, but I'm going to roll with Seattle on the road now with some rejuvenation. Some new life, 7-7, seven and seven, still in the playoff race, and actually looking quite alive. You know, I mean, I don't know about Green Bay. They're a game back now. One of the two teams, the Rams or the Saints, will lose this week because they face each other. So if Seattle wins, there'll be a game up on them. So mm-hmm. Seattle needs this one pretty big. Tennessee's already been eliminated. So I'm going to take whoever it may be, Geno Smith or Drew Locke. I think both of them are very similar in terms of their capabilities, different styles, but I think they have similar ceilings. So I don't think it really matters. And I really am excited for this Drew Locke story to maybe continue a little bit more. Yeah, I'm going to take Seattle as well, especially coming off of a uh, big win against the Eagles. They had the, they were the previous owner of the best uh, record in the league, although that has since fallen, I believe, to the 49ers and maybe even the Ravens here. Yep. Um, but. Yeah, it seems like Seattle should be able to come away with a victory here against a Tennessee team that I don't think is all that great. Did you say that Tannehill is starting this week, or did you said you just think he should? Sh- she no, should I actually, start. there's actually talk that he might. Because Will Levis might be hurt, though. Ooh, interesting. Let me look it up here. Either way, I'd be rolling with Seattle this week. I don't think that either QB would make a difference for Tennessee in this game. I'm not sure. Yeah, Will Levis is questionable. I don't even know what happened to him in the game last week. Was it like a concussion sort of no, thing? No, I don't think so. My phone's not loading, so we'll have to revisit this. But we'll move on to Indianapolis-Atlanta. Another game I don't feel comfortable picking, but Desmond Ritter, as we've said, is not good. Arthur Smith probably going to get fired. And for those reasons alone, I'm going to take another hot team, the Colts right now, even though they're on the road. The Falcons do tend to play better at home. Yeah, I'm also going to roll with the Colts here. It seems like they're just a better team overall. They're in the playoff picture. And, I mean, I guess Atlanta kind of is too, although they really should They kind of got played out of it, even though they were in the driver's seat a few weeks ago. I mean, it's still possible for them to make it, but it would be be very difficult. They would need quite a few things to happen there. For sure. Um, But, yeah, the Colts, I think, are the better team, and we're going to roll with some Minshew magic this week. Will Lavis has a sprained ankle. Oh, a sprained ankle. And honestly, very similar to the pair of ankle sprains Ryan Tannehill suffered last season. Wow. See, it must just be something in Tennessee. You're going to get your ankle screwed up. Yeah, evidently so. So we'll see what happens. He's very likely he could still start, of course, but they're going to have an MRI or whatever. Anywho, Jacksonville at Tampa Bay. I think Jacksonville bounces back in this game. I love them. At the minus one value, I think it's one of the best bets on the slate this week. Even though it's at Tampa, 
you know, it's the battle for Florida. I just think that Jacksonville absolutely desperately needs this one in Tampa Bay has now kind of settled back in. They should be able to lose this game and still even win the division, especially if New Orleans loses this week as well. I think they're totally fine. I think they'll kind of come back down to reality after a humongous offensive burst. Now, I'm a little worried about this pick because I am going to roll with the hotness in Tampa Bay after their performance last mm-hmm. week, but you are not mm-hmm. picking Tampa Bay, and you know mm-hmm. you say that you know your best team to bet on is – is the Bucks? So yeah. I'm a little leery here, but I just Jacksonville's been looking really, really sloppy lately. They have. That's certainly true. I just think they're gonna bounce back. They yeah, gotta no, clean that up. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that probably will happen. I just am hoping that it will maybe delay for a <laughs> week so I can get Tampa maybe Bay a couple to more weeks. get a win here for me. And I need Godwin to go nuts. I could use a little Godwin action as well. Yeah. Dallas at Miami, the game of the week. I guess this is wait. It's struggle. The schedule is super weird because of Christmas and all that, which I do love. You know, a ton of games on Christmas Eve, three games on Christmas Day, which is Monday. So it's just, man, it's all over. So I think the three Monday games are Vegas, Giants, and Baltimore. So the Sunday night football game is New England at Denver, which is a bad one. So I guess, yeah, Dallas at Miami is going to be your game of the week mm-hmm. at the 4 o'clock window. I'm going to take Dallas here. I love Dallas. I love them so much. I think it's one of the best bets of the week because of the fact that they just got embarrassed on the road at Baltimore. I know they're going now down to Miami, but it's a much more favorable spot on the road to play than up in Buffalo or any other cold environment. I think they absolutely are pissed off at this point. Miami now is flying high after a big win, and they're much more of a finesse stylistic team. Dallas is more physical and both of these teams struggle against winning teams. Dallas is 1 and 3, Miami is 0 oh and 3. I think Dallas improves to 2 and 3 while Miami falls to 0 oh and 4 against winning teams. I really like Dallas in this spot. That's a fair pick. You know, betting on Dallas as an underdog is always a smart play. Plus 2 is the corner QB this week. Yeah. That is that is a very good point. I think the streak gets broken this week though. <gasps> and I'm going to roll with Miami. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. The Finns are so hot right now, bro. Other than that Dude, Tennessee loss. Two weeks ago, they lost on bro, Monday night. that was so fluky, though. That they was so fluky. 14 points. It was because of Tyreek. It was just Tyreek was gone, and they just got a little sad without him. But they're not going to let that happen. Oh, my cheetah. My cheetah is gone. Yeah, dude. We need the <laughs> cheetah. He's an absolute leopard. So we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> He's an absolute leopard. <laughs> so yes. we're going to take Miami this week. Um, they're at home. Miami Stadium, I think it's a hard place to play in, especially if it's going to be nice weather, dude. Their stadium is structured so that. The sun? Yeah, dude. The just Dallas is just going to be cooking in that heat. Eyes, yeah. <laughs> and Miami just gets to chill in their shade and yeah. all that jazz. So. Kind of swim around in the cold under the pool. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to roll with Miami this week. And Tyreek, I think, will be back. Yeah. So really the only thing that's preventing me from being 100% confident in Miami is the fact that you're putting two in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I actually use some juju magic like that, some voodoo shit. Yeah. to win in my fantasy league i was looking you know going up against aj brown on monday night i was like what is the one thing i can do to affect aj brown's performance bet on him so i <laughs> bet on him to hit the over in yards and receptions he rolls the under exactly so you know there you go i tricked the universe they're like i can't win these bets absolutely <laughs> not and then like they're wait oh wait in doing so he now won fantasy which will end up being more money See, that's how you trick the universe right there and the fantasy betting Vegas gods. It's, you know, you got to get into that kind of thought process with some of this stuff. And so, yeah, it should be a good game. Could turn Christmas Eve into a Grinch fest, though. I could get really cranky real fast. I mean, some of these games here, you and I going against Tampa Bay and Jacksonville and this one. I could get kind of cranky here. You're going to steal the presents from dude, Whoville, bro? Dude, next thing you know, I'm showing up on your front door in <laughs> oh, the green no. suit. <laughs> oh, man. I would get a little excited if I saw that. but Coming down the chimney. <laughs> Ooh, very saucy. <laughs> Anyways, New England. Oh, no. Arizona at Chicago. Another little bit of raccoon game. I almost wanted to take Arizona, but I watched the video and I got talked into taking the Bears. And... People are really liking the Bears, in fact, and taking them and the four and a half points. I just 
was very disappointed by their performance last week. And now they're back at home. You got a warm weather team traveling to the cold. So I'm going to take the Bears, I guess, but I don't like it. Yeah, I'm also going to take the Bears. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of tough. I mean, just because Arizona actually looked like relatively solid against the 49ers. Yeah, that's they what put I'm up saying. Some points. I'm honestly surprised the Bears are so favorited. Yeah, I mean, they just – the Bears kind of just feel like the better team. Like, I know that they, like, they cannot close out a game and they mm-hmm. find a way to just lose all of these games – at the end of the day, I don't really think that the Bears are bad. Like, I think that they make some really poor, like, just game time decisions and, like, coaching yeah. moves. But mm-hmm. they just, like, feel like they're, like, a decent, like, maybe decent's even a stretch. Just, like, a mediocre team in Arizona feels like they're just a bad team. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what the Vegas thought process is for that. But yeah. I just, I feel a little uneasy about it, but maybe it's just because I'm so anti-Chicago since I live here. Right. I don't know. New England at Denver. Sunday night football with a big Ooh. one. It's perfect time to, you know, turn it off and just start partying with the fam on Christmas Eve. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take Denver, I guess. Another one I'm not loving because Denver looks so bad against the Lions. But I do expect them to bounce back, especially at home here. Should be a relatively low-scoring game, I'd assume. Both are pretty good defenses, even though Denver got exposed. I mean, they had a couple bad games this year. It seems like once they give up, like, 20 points, then it's just the floodgates are open, you know, against, of course, the Dolphins and then the Lions. You know, if they give up more than 20, they're just checking out. Yeah, I mean, it's just hard to bet on, you know, New England to win any sort of game, especially when they're facing a good defense like Denver. I mean, New England doesn't even really put up points as it is. I don't expect them to put up many points against one of the top defenses in the league here. So we are going to roll with Denver this week as well. Moving to Christmas Day, Merry Christmas, Vegas at Kansas City. I need some rationale for your pick here. I would be happy to provide it to you. Please do. Enlighten me. This feels like a sneaky Vegas win to me on a Christmas day, like magic snowy miracle, you know, kind of like Horton hairs a who he just like comes into Whoville. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. Yeah, dude. Las Vegas just comes into Kansas city and they (laughs) ate O'Connell, the abominable snowman. Yeah, dude. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like something like sneaky is going to happen and Vegas is just going to be like celebrating that they got this Christmas miracle. It's just going to be like a winter wonderland for them. Wow. And, uh, it's just – it's all comes down to the fact that this is going to be on Christmas, bro. It's just like one <laughs> I of mean, those sneaky things. Surely but this Taylor is, Swift won't be there because she'll be with her family right. on Christmas Day. Of course, yeah. So, actually, that's a good, good yeah. point there. So, this just feels like one of those – this is my upset pick of the week, though, yeah. for sure. I mean, this is like the one I feel like is – very obviously you should be picking Kansas City, but division rivalry matchup, I think, could go Las Vegas' way, especially when Kansas City has been looking kind of bad lately. Yeah, they've certainly struggled. I'm going to take Kansas City still. I just think that they know how to play the Raiders, especially at home. If the Raiders had any chance this year to beat the uh, Chiefs, it was in their own building a few weeks ago when yeah. they were up 14 points and blew it. So. That was your chance. You squander it. Now it's time to get your asses handy, especially after a big stat line that you put up last week. Actually, there was, I remember this came out, this like little weird stat when the Dolphins hung 70 on the Broncos earlier or whatever it was. Teams after putting up that many points, like almost always lose. Really? And the Dolphins did lose the following week after putting up 70 points on the Broncos. Maybe this will be the exception. Could be, could be. (laughs) Giants at Philadelphia, not a great Christmas Day slate for no. sure. I'm gonna take Philadelphia here to bounce back in a big way. Who knows? It seems what's like going the on. obvious pick, yeah. man. They're not dropping four straight, especially not to the Giants. I am a little concerned for the Philadelphia Eagles though, because this would be if they win this game the fourth straight time in less than three, well, almost 365 days that they beat the Giants, and then when they beat them, when they face them in two weeks again, it could be the fifth time. And it's very hard to beat a team five times in a row against the same coaching staff. That's a good point. One of these games could go the other way, especially maybe the next one in New York. Tommy DeVito might be back for that one. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm a little concerned about the Eagles. One of these games you're bound to lose because they destroyed the Giants twice last year and they faced them in the playoffs, destroyed them then too. So this one just, 
feels a little weird to me, but I'm going to save that weirdness for the one that's in New York in week 18. I got you. Yeah, I can get behind that pick. It, you know, it just seems like, I mean, Philly is kind of a little bit fraudulent that they go like Mm -hmm. 10 and one and then they lose, you know, it was a tough stretch of games. I mean, everyone has a tough stretch. I mean, Baltimore hasn't, but I think San Francisco, Buffalo, Kansas city, Mm -hmm. they've all had tough stretches. Right. Yeah. So Philly went through that as well, but they should be able to get this win here, really solidify, you know, everything going on with the playoffs and, uh, then they can lose to the Giants later on when it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, it's possible. But I still think it's also likely that they go 5-0 and against them. Yeah. Baltimore at San Francisco to close out. Best Monday game night. on Christmas for yeah. sure. Yeah, what a nice Christmas gift here. I do like San Francisco for sure. I think Baltimore is due for a loss. San Francisco has just been so dominant lately. I like that they're at home here. Last time these two teams played, it was the year that Lamar Jackson won MVP and mm-hmm. the Ravens were the number one seed. Back in 2019, it was a rainy day, and the Ravens didn't end up winning late in that game. This time, I think it goes to San Francisco. Yeah, I'm also going to take San Fran here. There's not a single team that I would take against San Fran right now when San Fran is at home. No. I think, yeah, I mean, there's just nothing else you can say about that. They look like the number one team in the league. When I think I would take them on the road against Baltimore. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, mean, yeah, I would take Vegas them on the road against Baltimore. saying that they would still be like two-and-a-half-point favorites on the road because yeah. they're five-and-a-half-point favorites at home. Yeah, no, I mean, I would also take them against the yeah. road um, or on the road against Baltimore, but I just meant that I would literally yeah. take San Fran against any of the other 31 teams at home. I just hope they stay healthy because if they yeah. do, they will continue to have this kind of success. Mm-hmm. Week 16, start and sit, my favorite segment of the pod. I'm going to start T. Higgins. I got burned by not starting him this past week, even though he put up a goose egg in the first half of that game, then had four receptions, two touchdowns, that crazy reaching over the goal line one. Yeah. That was wild. So I just think with Jamar Chase out, he's bound to have another decent game and a very winnable game for them. I'm also going to start Garrett Wilson. I think that Trevor Simeon will use him up. He knows that he's very talented. Plus, they're going up against a relatively easy defense in the commanders i want to say jordan love though i think the carolina packer game will be low scoring kind of similar to the game that they just played against the falcons i think that it's going to be an uglier one although the weather will be nice so i can understand if you don't listen to me for this it's just something to consider after all (laughs) good picks good picks Uh, my start this week is jacoby myers in this raiders Chiefs game, dude. Is he the reason he wins or they win? <clears throat> I don't know that he's going to be the reason that they win, but he's going to have two touchdowns two? today. Yeah, I think one will be a receiving touchdown, oh my and God. he might have a passing touchdown, dude. He Have you oh seen that he was like throwing he the did. ball this past yeah, week? Yeah, I did see that. He's having, he's having a passing touchdown this week oh as well. God. So Back he's to back weeks. Jacoby is having two touchdowns this week, Wow. and uh, he's my start. Second start, I've got Cade Otten. Now it's a ballsy one. Yeah, I know. So Tampa Bay went ballistic last week, put up a ton of yards, a lot of points, and Kate Otten was not very involved in that offense. So that's mm-hmm. why this makes this such a ballsy pick. But I feel like that was just kind of a fluky sort of performance out of him. I think that Baker is going to make more of an effort this week to get him the ball in this matchup. I think he gets a touchdown, and I think he has one of his best games of the season in terms of his yardage stat line. And then for my sit this week, basically doing the exact same thing as last week. I said Just to sit anyone going against the yeah. Browns, <laughs> dude. I said to select sit Khalil Herbert and Deonta Foreman against the Browns. That cashed, so we're gonna sit Devin Sim- Singletary and Damian Pierce against the Browns too. Hopefully that comes through for us. Yeah, I love that one. I like all of them except Kate Odd, and I think that one's a little bit, a little too much of a stretch. Okay. I need to see a little bit more out of him before I start him in really any of league of significance. But moving on to week 16, best bets. We'll see what happens. I'm leaning away from college football because of, like I said, how inconsistent the teams can be with all these opt outs. I like Cleveland plus two and a half against Houston. Especially I didn't even CJ realize Scott. they were underdogs. I know, yeah, they are underdogs. Wow, I like that pick a lot, actually. Just don't know if C.J. Stroud is going to start, so I'm going to lock in them at 2.5 right now in case yeah. he doesn't. Good pick. I love Jacksonville on the money line and Dallas. I think both will win. There's tremendous value in there 
for great teams going up against lesser opponents, in my opinion. Arizona plus four and a half. I almost took him out right, but I'm going to take him with the points. See what happens. Then Dallas at Miami under 51. I think Dallas kind of shuts down Miami. I think Dallas does just enough to win. This strikes me as like a 21-17, 24-17 type of ball game. Then Jacksonville at Tampa Bay. I like this one to go over 43. I think Jacksonville has a humongous game and Tampa Bay has a decent game. I think this one's going to be a 30 to 14 type of game, 30 to 17 type of game. In terms of college football, I like Utah minus six and a half. Bryson Barnes still playing despite entering the transfer portal and that game to go over 42. Both offenses are very capable and Northwestern's defense is not very good. Then Air Force, I'm going to take them plus two and a half against James Madison, whose quarterback just went to the transfer portal. I think that they will cover and maybe even win that game. But other than that, college football is so hit or miss because, like I said, of all the opt-outs, I just really have no idea what to do. But I will have some good picks ready to go for the playoffs in a couple weeks. Good stuff there. Um, I kind of already talked about my best bet this week. I love New Orleans plus four against the Rams, dude. 97% on the Rams feels like you got to take New Orleans there, fade the public. Second one, Buffalo minus 12 and a half. This is a monster spread. But I think I, it went down to 11, so you oh, might even did be able really? to get better. Oh, wow. That's exciting. Against the Chargers that just, you know, they didn't even cover plus 40 against <laughs> <laughs> the Raiders. Plus so, 40. Nice. <laughs> so we're going to take Buffalo minus 12 and a half here. Hopefully this isn't like something – stupid like a bad pick on my part like the chargers just somehow emerge and have like a great comeback game Houston here stick yeah i mean I'm, <laughs> I'm not betting on the stick man bro and then the last one washington plus three really like washington this week i just think that three points is a little bit too much to give them against the jets i'm honestly shocked that they're even underdogs in this game i just the jets don't feel like they're they should be the favorite. I guess they are at home, but Washington should be able to come in and win this game, in my opinion. So I like taking them. I would even say money line other than the plus three, but both are good. Yeah, I like those picks. I have Washington myself, and I do like Buffalo to cover, especially if it's at 11 or even less than that. Yeah. But that's all we have for you guys. Thank you, as always, for watching. I don't know if we'll do any shorts this week. We didn't this past week. Probably not with the holidays and all that yeah. stuff, unless I'm feeling really juicy. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, maybe probably. some eggnog. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I'm gonna want to do any shorts either. We've kind of been straying away from them. Our picks got a little bit. I got a little bit frustrated with my parlays. We went on like a three-game losing <laughs> streak ideal. for them. Yeah, but and I had my eight and zero run in college football to follow it up with an O and three yeah. burger. Dude, <laughs> those things are just so tough sometimes. I don't understand it. Oh, well, I still, you know, we're still up on the year. I think if you were to surmise and aggregate yeah. everything from the shorts, you would have made money. I agree. Yeah. So you maybe we'll have to do that and actually tell you guys. So we're not just bogusing it, but that's all we have for you guys. Thanks as always for listening. And we'll see you next yep. week. For happy holidays. Guys. Yeah. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever it may be. Yeah. Happy football. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Jake Browning, you know, and Easton Stick. I celebrate those backup quarterbacks. Oh, yeah. Always, dude. They yes. are a nice little gift under the Christmas tree, even oh, a yeah, stocking dude. stuffer, as they say. <laughs> Can't wait to see a dead raven on my front porch on oh. Christmas Day. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Bye.